Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Deconstructing the Game. My name is Mike. I'm V. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the history of corporations within Night City and what the history of those corporations might mean for the future of our game. I've tried to keep this video as spoiler free as possible, but there might be some areas I talk about or things I show you that you don't want to see just yet. So if you want to be completely surprised and you want a fresh look at the game, you can always come back after the fact, have a bit more information about the game, and then you can make your own decisions based on what I show you and what I talk about in this video. But for the rest of you who are sticking around, let's get to it. So for some of you, the history lesson at the start of this video might be long and boring, and if you don't want to know anything about the corporations of Cyberpunk 2077, you can always skip ahead to the end where I make my conclusions and tell you about my theories based upon that history and what I've seen in the game so far. I'll post timestamps down below so you can easily identify where you want to go to, but the corporations in Cyberpunk 2077 do have a little influence in the game so far, and as I say, they may have a larger influence in the future. So. You might want to stick around for the history lesson, but if not, the timestamps are there for you. And if CD Projekt Red are going to do anything with this game like they do with The Witcher 3, a lot of the content in that game is influenced by a series of books that are heavily referenced in the game, so you never know, we might see more of that in the future for this game. But anyway, let's get to it. So to start off with, I'm going to be talking about the two major companies of Night City, and of course they are Arasaka and Miltech. Arasaka started off in the early 1900s as a manufacturing company headed up by Seiji Arasaka. Seiji Arasaka passed away in the 1960s and his son Subur Arasaka took control of the firm and initiated a series of far-reaching reforms. This expanded the company into the banking sector and the private security sector. The private security sector grew so quickly and had a reputation for being so professional that Subaru's Arasaka's influence of the globe and Japan extended into the political sphere. People worried so much about his influence in the political sphere that they created a treaty to stop him getting what he wanted and this treaty would trouble him for decades to come. Subura Arasaka profited off of the collapse of 1994 and 1996 and by manipulating his assets and stocks he was one of the companies that was able to profit from that crash. Arasaka and Miltech have always been enemies but never more than during the fourth corporate war which we'll get to in a second. Miltech is one of the younger companies and was founded in 1996 by an Italian weapon designer Antonio Lucessi. The company was originally called Armatech Lucessi International but after designing primary and sidearm weapons for the United States Army was soon changed to Miltech and expanded its catalogue into not only weaponry but vehicles and weapon technology as well. But Armatech's transition to Miltech was never that easy and it only became Miltech when General Donald Lundy got tired of seeing his own men die on the battlefield due to the American Army buying cheap knockoff equipment from rival companies of Lucessi. Lucessi and Lundy formed a union and decided to call the company Miltech. They then won the contract for the Ronin Assault Rifle Primary Weapon System and the Sidearm System. From then on they expanded to a global scale and the company flourished. Miltech was one of the major participants in the Fourth Corporate War during which it clashed violently with Arasaka and dealt the devastating blow that was the mini nuke within its headquarters of Night nice City. After the Fourth Corporate War, Miltech was nationalised by the United States government to bolster their own ranks, but since that nationalisation, Miltech regained some of its independence, however some of its high ranking officials remain in office, allowing the company to gain trillions in revenue. The shadows are Arasaka that only have billions in revenue. Both the companies are super successful and could be considered mega corporations of a global scale, but Arasaka is more influential in its policies and politics due to Subura Arasaka's studying when his father was in charge. Subura Arasaka wanted political gain and influence to return Japan to its former glory after World War II, and he never forgot how the Americans devastated his country. However, Suburu's global takeover soon ceased after the nuclear detonation of Arasaka Tower and growing pressure from the Japanese government to pull back. This growing pressure to pull back ended the war and reduced Arasaka to a Japanese-only company who was only allowed to operate within the borders of Japan. 
Nevertheless, Arasaka flourished in Japan and even overcame internal struggles, with Subura Arasaka's children all fighting over what direction the company should take next. Subura Arasaka was able to unify the family and was later asked to return to Night City in order to defend it against an invasion that would be the Unification War. If you take away the banking, Miltech and Arasaka could appear to be the same company. Operating under black ops, military coups, assassinations, terror attacks, Arasaka and Miltech have an awful lot in common in that regard. So why do they clash so much during the fourth corporate war? Well, it's important to note that the fourth corporate war was actually started by two smaller companies who wanted to acquire a liquidating ocean research and transport company by the name of IHAG. The two bidding companies, Sino and OTEC, Sino standing for Corporation Internationale Anautical et Oceanique, and OTEC standing for Ocean Technology and Energy Corporation, wanted to acquire the assets of IHAG, a German company that's English translation relates to International Merchant Marine Corporation. All three companies worked in the same field, so when IHAG went bankrupt, both other companies wanted the assets and quickly turned to the table for negotiations. However, negotiations quickly turned south and the Arasaka Corporation was hired by Sino, where the Militech Corporation were hired by OTEC. Both were hired to fight the other's war and quickly the fourth corporate war ensued. What's interesting to note is that the two smaller companies, Sino and OTEC, resolved their differences peacefully during the fourth corporate war, but due to the bloodshed, and the turmoil caused by Arasaka and Miltech, neither company wanted to stand down. The feud is also fueled by Subura Arasaka hating General Donald Lundy who worked for Miltech. The war's hatred is spilled over and personal battles quickly ensued. And as we know, it was only stopped by Miltech's intervention with the nuclear device Arasaka Tower and the Japanese pressure to pull back. The universe of Cyberpunk 2077 contains multiple corporations and they have a vast history of sabotage and war. Companies like this are not limited to Arasaka and involve other companies like Petrochem, Sav Oil and Biotechnica have even had a hand in the fourth corporate war with Arasaka as well. There are different smaller companies in Night City that we haven't really explored yet that involve companies like Dynalar, Kuroshi and Kang Tao who is a relatively new company that is really storming the market with their smart weapon technology. So what do all these companies have to do with potential future content for Cyberpunk 2077? Well, if anyone's explored the corporate plaza, you'll notice that we obviously have the mega corporations headquarters like Arasaka and Miltech and Kang Tao, all centered around the park. But these interiors aren't fully developed yet, and in fact, we can only really get into Arasaka during missions. Miltech is not even available, and in fact, there are small areas that are under development that are not used and are blocked behind invisible walls. But if you check out some other videos on YouTube, you can see people clipping in using console commands on the PC. There's also elevators that will take you to that certain area, but unfortunately are blocked off by turnstiles and electric fences. You can interact with the keypad and try and open the doors, but nothing will happen yet. There's also enemies around the corner and there's more doors and keypads that could enter the building later on, but I have clipped in and there's nothing for you just yet. What you will notice in these hidden areas though is that there are weapon displays on the walls and even a suitcase with an item inside it, so maybe this is going to be an area for future development. You'll also see turrets up here as well which is a bit odd considering you can't actually get here and would I really want Arasaka turrets defending my building when I'm a rival company? I don't think so. Kuroshi also has a fully developed exterior with keypads on the doors, hackable barriers and even has guards stationed around the area you can interact with and fight. There's also loot boxes and an AV pad with a little surprise for you to have a laugh at. Earlier I mentioned two companies by the name of Petrochem and Sav Oil. You'll have noticed Petrochem's logo in Corporate Plaza and on the dam outside Night City, but what do they have to do with Sav Oil? Well, both those companies were involved in the second corporate war. One company's oil fields went up in smoke and naturally they blamed their rival. It was literally just an accident, but both companies fought each other until the bitter end, costing hundreds of lives and millions of dollars. It's important to note that many established companies within the cyberpunk universe have their own space stations and orbital facilities, and some companies even work in conjunction with one another. So could we see a further space expansion in relation to corporate organizations? Because I can definitely see some sabotage missions 
and thievery missions in the future. This could be on multiplayer scale or just some added DLC missions. I do think that eventually we will be able to blow up the dam that hides Laguna Bend and could be an old Sav Oil grudge against Petrochem. Having looked at the sheer volume of water that covers Laguna Bend, it's unclear if that water will fit in between the gap between the two dams, but in the future we might be able to drain the water away to reveal more. It's unclear at the moment if Petrochem owned both the dams or if perhaps another company built a dam up behind their dam to stop them gaining the benefits of hydroelectricity production, but I think it could both be Petrochem and in that case opens up a whole sabotage option for Savoil or indeed any other company in the game. This theory is slightly backed up by the fact there's buildings on the other side of the geofence just around the corner that have nicely rendered textures in some areas but the rest of the buildings aren't fully developed yet. Many companies also have their own underwater facilities and this could explain the reason we have the oxygen tank and very little to explore in the game so far. Upon looking at the locations of the headquarters for some buildings, it does look like they could be arenas of some kind for online multiplayer like capture the flag, sabotage or just a general deathmatch. Places like Dynalar and Kuroshi even have security checkpoints that are so far unimplemented and the only one that I've seen work so far is the one in Kopeki Plaza at the start of the game. So again, future missions or possible online DLC. We still don't know who Mr Blue Eyes works for and that opens up a lot of avenues for sabotage and conflict with other companies. Could Mr Blue Eyes be an independent party or might he work for Miltec? In that case, the old fourth corporate war feud between Miltec and Arasaka could be reignited. Otec are also a company to look out for in the future as they have a small gripe with Arasaka as they were the security force in place when things went south for them. Otec also supply Arasaka with liquid hydrogen, surprisingly enough, for their space program. And if we take a look at the Arasaka docks, we see multiple pipelines going in the direction of the unfinished spaceport. Once again, this might open up avenues for further sabotage missions. During the fourth corporate war, Biotechnica tried to stay as neutral as possible and had already signed contracts with both Miltec and Arasaka previously. However, being the bigger company, Arasaka got more benefits and under the table, Biotechnica conducted more deals with them. If Miltec caught wind of this, this could have repercussions and the Biotechnica flats could be an ideal area for future missions or battlegrounds. This idea is slightly backed up by the fact only half of the area is available and the other half is blocked by a geofence. I have clipped into this area and it is pretty much just the exact same with a sea defence wall and a few pipelines. There's also unfinished areas like the casino grounds and the quarry area, also the football stadium which could be spawning areas or arenas for multiplayer deathmatches or further missions. And in fact, if you own a guidebook, CD Projekt Red didn't even try to hide the fact that the casino grounds and quarry areas were there. And if you look closely at the football stadium, there was no roof on the finished product in the guidebook. So again, there was content there that was supposed to be here that isn't here yet. The history of corporations is only slightly shared in shards around the game and we haven't really got to experience much of the corporations apart from Arasaka. We have a hint of Miltec and a little bit of Kuroshi as we have the scanner embedded in our eye socket but we haven't really got involved with much corporation activities. Of course some of the gigs we do do involve thievery and sabotage but not on a large scale level. So I hope CD Projekt Red embraces the history of Cyberpunk and gives us some future content relating to these companies. Everything I've mentioned in this video so far has been only theory based on the history of Cyberpunk 2077 and what we see in the game. Future content isn't only limited to online play but we could see different story missions as well and I can definitely see CD Projekt Red implementing some kind of faction system like you work for Miltec, Petrochem or Arasaka and you play through certain story missions with them and are able to swap and change what you want to do just like your starting stories for the game. This would be a nice addition but I'm not holding my breath because of course there is a lot of work to do in the game so far in relation to glitches and bugs but I want to hold a hopeful candle to what CD Projekt Red could do in the future as really there is no other choice at this point but whatever it is I hope it's something to do with corporations because this is an area in the game that is highly influential but very underexplored.
Of course, the history of Cyberpunk 2077 isn't only limited to corporations, and there are many other factions within the game as well, but I've limited this video to corporations only, as I feel like there's a lot of stuff in the game that's influenced by corporations that we haven't actually got to see firsthand yet. The visuals I provided only provide a small chunk of the un- finished areas of the corporations of the game and if you want you can always explore more in your own game to see what you can find as well. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and listening to the history of corporations of Cyberpunk 2077. For more content like this you can check out the Twitch feed as I will go live on occasions doing some glitches and tip videos. I will do other videos for games as well uh, but at the moment I'll be focusing on Cyberpunk 2077 for the foreseeable future. My name's Mike, you've been watching Deconstructing the Game, I'll catch you later.